of the most important things in karate is bunkai, the practical applications of kata. Because if you don't know how to apply your kata, it's just a dance, right? As the legendary karate master Moto Buchoki once said, nothing is more harmful to the world than a martial art that is not effective in actual self-defense. But what if you don't have a training partner? Is it possible to practice bunkai on your own? The answer is yes. All it requires is a little bit of imagination and a very special training method. Keep watching. We're gonna create an artificial opponent that allows you to practice full contact applications without a partner. I'm also gonna teach you a special sequence of four movements taken straight from kata that you can start practicing right away. This is gonna teach you a lot about how to use kata in self-defense. And lastly, I'm gonna show you how to tailor this training method to suit your own unique abilities. Sounds good? Let's get started. The first thing you need is a rope or a belt or an elastic band or something similar. I'm gonna use a karate belt. Next, you need an attachment point. I'm gonna use a heavy bag. Now you're simply gonna combine them both, thereby creating a simple bunkai dummy. Make sure it's tight and secure. Ideally, it should be about shoulder height and the loose end should be roughly the same length as your own arm. Okay, I know what you're thinking. But Jesse, if we wanna practice bunkai without a partner, why don't we just do the kata? You're right, that's why kata was created in the first place, to reenact the movements that you would do against an attacker. But kicking and punching in thin air is not enough. You need resistance and impact and kinesthetic awareness and distance and timing and all these other factors that you just don't get from solo training. Unless you implement the training method that I'm gonna reveal to you right now. The first thing I want you to do is get familiar with the belt. Just feel the sensation of holding it, pulling it, and shifting sides. Play around. You want to make friends with the idea that this belt represents both arms of your imaginary opponent. Although it's not perfectly identical to a real arm, it's the next best thing. Once you have a feel for the belt, let's start with the first technique. We're gonna begin with a movement that most people recognize as a classical karate block. However, the original application of most blocks is actually attacks. That's why you often step forward when you perform blocks in your kata. So we're simply gonna grab the belt and step in with our high block as an attack to the neck. Notice how I'm also pulling the belt to my hip. In Japanese, we call this hikite, which literally means pulling hand. That's why we often keep our hands chambered at the side in karate. By pulling the arm, you're controlling the opponent, displacing his balance, and multiplying the effect of your attack. Hikite is one of the most effective techniques in karate. That's why we do it so much. It's also a key feature of this training method, so make sure that you always keep it in mind. You're gonna practice this movement on both sides. Make sure that you switch the legs and arms at the same time and try to find the balance between the pulling and the striking motion. The second technique we're gonna do is the classical karate chop, also known as shuto uchi in Japanese. And don't worry, I'm gonna show you exactly how to transition from the previous movement to this movement very soon. But for now, just get familiar with grabbing the belt, pulling it back and striking with the edge of your hand at the same time. Notice how I'm circling away from the center line into a slight angle that gives me a huge advantage, both from a defensive and offensive perspective. Perfect for attacking with the shuto and staying safe at the same time. Just like with the previous technique, practice this on both sides. Third, 
we're gonna incorporate a kick. In this case, a front kick. All you're gonna do is slide to the side, pull the belt, and use your front leg to execute a maigiri to the target. Then switch side and try the same movement on the other side. Since your leg is longer than your arm, you might find yourself holding the belt further towards its end now, and that's perfectly fine. One of the benefits of this training method is that it teaches you the different ranges of combat. In fact, we've been gradually moving from close range to medium range to long range all the time. Once you're done with the kick, it's time for the last technique. Last but not least, you're gonna incorporate a mid-level block or chudan uke in Japanese. But again, instead of using the block to defend against an opponent's attack, it will be used to manipulate and possibly break your opponent's elbow joint. As the saying goes, a block is a lock, is a blow, is a throw. Again, using blocks like attacks is far more in line with the original intent of their application. After all, these movements are not even called blocks in Japanese because the word uke actually comes from the word ukeru, which literally means to receive. And that's the opposite of blocking. Anyway, back to the technique. Since we're using this movement for limb control, I want you to really pull the belt with both arms here. And don't be afraid to drop your whole body weight into it. Feel the sensation of disrupting your opponent's balance. And as always, try the movement on both sides. Now that you have a grasp of the four techniques in isolation, the next step is integration. Meaning you need to learn how and why to transition from technique one to four. This is important because a fight doesn't happen in a vacuum. You can't just attack somebody and not expect them to react, right? So let's start with the first technique again. Imagine you're executing the age uke, but instead of hitting your opponent's neck, he blocks your arm. This reaction is what leads you to technique number two, as you scoop your elbow down and secure your opponent's arm to deliver the second technique. You're just going with the flow by using the opponent's energy against him. The key is to maintain a physical connection throughout the full transition. This adhesiveness is known as Muchimi in Okinawa, the birthplace of karate. Moving on, let's have a look at the second transition. In this case, your opponent is defending against your Shuto Uchi, while freeing his other arm to attack you back. That's why you need to move to safety, by forcefully pulling his arm down in what looks like a classical low block, or Gedan Barai, to disrupt his balance, hinder his counterattack, and expose him to your kick. When you apply this transition against the belt, just feed it from one hand to the other. Last but not least, the final transition. After delivering the kick, put your foot down and drop into the Chudan Uke. This is your fourth and final technique from this sequence. However, since this is a flow drill, your opponent is now gonna strong arm you and try to defend against the elbow lock. So all you do is scoop the arm around, let go of your hikite, and transition into technique number one. That completes the full sequence. But now, you're on the opposite side, which allows you to seamlessly flow through the full sequence on both sides of the body without any interruptions. Pretty cool, right? The level of this training method is to create your own sequence. If this sounds scary, don't worry, I'm gonna tell you exactly how to do it. Start by doing the sequence you already know, but then see if you can replace a technique with a technique of your own. For example, the first age uke could be a palm heel strike instead, or the second shuto uchi could be a hammer fist, or try a different kick instead of the maigiri by gradually replacing the familiar with the unfamiliar. You expand your comfort zone and make the exercise suit your own individual preference. And before you know it, you will be in full freestyle mode. And that is when the magic happens. 
Try different kinds of angles and footwork. Try different ranges of combat. Try new techniques and tactics. Try placing your hikite in higher or lower positions. Use techniques from traditional kata or use techniques from modern sports karate. The only limit is your imagination. And if you drop the belt, don't stop. Just keep going. In fact, sometimes you might even let it go on purpose because you're visualizing a different scenario. I'm telling you, this training method might look fun, but it's hard, both mentally and physically. And that's precisely why it's so valuable, because if it was easy, it wouldn't be worth it. Now, it's time to head out and try it in the real world. Wish me luck.